Analysis Chapter 30 Richard Carson remained pathetically indecisive, unable to choose a career. Mr. Jandai's attributes at least some of his ir irresoluteness to the influence of the Jandai's and Jandai's case. Incomprehensible heap of uncertainty and procrastination. Easter believes that Richard's education consisting most of learning to write Latin verse has also been a factor. Such training does not nothing to prepare one for the work of the world. Among other professions, Mr. John Dyer suggests that Richard might enjoy being a surgeon. Richard's reaction is immediate, accepting the idea enthusiastically soon as surgeon's apprentice in the house of Mr. Bai Han Badger, where we learn that Mr. Badger is a snobbish, uh, snobbish dilettant who has been married twice before to distinguished man is forever talking about her ha 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 husband, past and present. Summary. Easter has been attending various theatres, has noticed that Mr. Guppy follows her and always managed to have himself seen wearing and downcast expression of a rejected suitor. Richard and Ada now realize that they are in love, but Mr. John Dice advises them to postpone marriage because they are quite young and Richard needs to establish himself in his profession. At a small dinner party given by bad girls, Ethan noticed and seems attracted to one of the gusto, a young surgeon of dark complexion, Alan Woodcard. Analysis. The chapter is devoted mostly to one of the subplots, the romance of Ada and Richard, but at the end it surprises us and advances the main plot by indicating that Easter is attracted to a young surgeon. Even the subplot, however, reinforced Dickens' principal explicit theme, that is, the pernicious influence of human legal institutions and procedures. Dickens' in social critique and sensible reformer is also evident in Easter's attitude towards training young men to write Latin verse. Dickens' abhorrence of unreal attitudes and behavior is again exemplified in the old and in such a substantial Mrs. Abbeham Badger. This is the third exaggerated unreal wife thus far encountered. The earlier ones are Mrs. Jellyby and Mr. Mrs. Pardigal. Each is somewhat comic but also distinctly uh, repugnant. Summary and analysis chapter 14. Eastern narrative continues embarking upon his new career. Richard leaves the Chandai's household but remains foolishly hopeful of becoming rich for, from the Chancery suit. Summary. Easter's narrative continues embarking upon his new career. Richard leaves the Chandai's household but remains foolishly hopeful for becoming rich from the Chancery suit. From a surprise visit by Mrs. Jellyby, Easter learns that Carrie, hoping to escape from her mother's tyranny, has become engaged to Prince uh, Turvi Drop, a dancing instructor in an academy of department run by Turvi Drop Senior. The old man, a model of depo uh, deportment and nothing else, is completely useless and forces young Turvi Drop to do all work of the academy. Caddy has begun practicing housekeeping in old Miss Flight's lodging. Mr. Crook is trying to teach himself to read and write. His doctor, Alan Woodcard, is invited to dinner at Blake House. Analysis. Dickens continues to tie his various characters more closely together. Caddy and Easter and Miss Flight group with Dr. Woodcard and the later with uh, Mr. John Dias and Easter. One of the subplot, The Adventures of Caddy Jaribi, is advanced. The Easter and Alan Woodcard continues to move towards each other. Dickens disgust with the irresponsible uh, do gooders appear again, and the theme of the apparent tyrannizing their children is reinforced by the introduction of the arrogant and worthless despise as being a model of deportment, old Mr. Tarvey Drop and a uh, Billy Guard son, Prince. Summary and Analysis Chapter 15. Here again we see that Mr. Jandice is frequently distressed by philanthropists with whom he associates. Harold Skimpole reveals that Coven says Nikit, the man who frequently arrested him for death, has died. Mr. John dies, Easter and Ada go to Nikit's lodging to find that the man left three destitute, destitute children, Charlotte, Charlie, Tom and 18-month-old Emma. Summary. Mr. Gridley, a fellow boarder at Mrs. Bil uh, Bling Blinders, a bitten True Clint, man from Shofires, is surprisingly kind and hopeful to naked children. He tells Mr. John Dias and his ward cause of the bitterness. The delay of the Chancery Court has destroyed an inheritance that belonged to him, his brother. Analysis. 
Herold, Skimpole and the Chancery Court have something important in common. Both seem unreal in attitude and both are quite irresponsible. Though the figure of the Gradley Dickens strengthened his criticism of Chancery, the unmerited and pathetic suffering of the children and recurring theme in much of Dickens' fiction is portrayed again in The Children Made Orphan by Neckett's Dead. Summary and Analysis, Chapter 16. So Leicester Dedlock is a babe, suffering with gout of Chesney Bowl, Lady Dedlock unsuccessfully disguised as a servant goes to London and locate Joe, the crossing sweeper of the dilapidate Dile street called Tom All Alone. He takes her on tour of the place mentioned in news account of the Nemo's death and inquisition. She gives him a gold coin afterwards. At Chesney Bowl, Mrs. Rouncewell tells Rosa that the step on goes to walk has never been more distinct than it is tonight. Summary analysis. Suspense increases as readers wonder why did Lady Dadlock is so intent upon learning that all she can about the de deceased Mr. Nemo. In Joe and in the vivid descriptions of his street and Nemo graveyard, Dickens create a powerful image of the wretched folk of London and their grotesque squalid uh, invariance. Summary and analysis of chapter 17. From the bad girls, Easter and Ada learn that Richard is not talking, taking his medical every apprenticeship seriously. Later, Richard admits as much as says that he may, may abandon medicine and take up law. For Ada's sake, Ida, uh, Esther and Mr. John Dice's alarm. Summary. Mr. John Dice tells Esther that he knows about her past. He has agreed to become her guardian if and when her aunt, Mrs. Miss Barbary, died. The next day, Alan Woodcart, accompanied by his mother, comes to say goodbye. Alan is bound for the Orient as a ship surgeon. The following morning, carry jelly bee, diverse flower that Alan left seeming on purpose for Easter. Analysis Easter's quickening curiosity about her past parallels Lady Deadlock's pursuit of the fact about Nemo. To some readers, this parallel may suggest the possibility of the close connection between Easter and Lady Deadlock. There can no longer be any doubt that eventually Alan Woodcart and Easter will be brought together. Summary and Analysis Chapter 18 Richard not surprisingly decide that he will drop his medical apprenticeship and begin to career in begin a career begins a career in law, working in Miss Mr. Cagney's office, Mr. John Dice, Easter Adan scheme pole visit by Thorns at his place near Chesney Bowl. At church, Easter is surprised at how much Lady Dedlock resembles Miss Barbary. Summary Later, by chance, Easter Ada and Mr. John Dice encounters Lady Dedlock in a, a gamekeeper's lodge where they have all sought shelter from a fierce thunderstorm. Hearing Lady Dedlock speak, Easter heartbeat widely and explain nably. Are uh, there those are uh, uh, before my mind innumerable pictures of myself? Lady Dedlock often often a French maid Millie hot turn by seem to prefer Rosa when it stopped raining, heart heartens walk home barefoot through uh, the wet grass. Analysis. The chapter tends to confirm the reader's surprise sur surmise that a strong connection exists and will soon be revealed between Easter Lady Deadlock and Miss Barbary. The portrayal of Hortons as a violently emotional person, uh, often of, offended by Lady Deadlock, prepare the readers for the revenge that the maid will take later in the novel. Summary and Analysis Chapter 19 It is now summer, the snacks be entertained their minister and his wife, Mr. and Mrs. Chad Band. Outside the Snagsby's house are Joe and a policeman who insists that the boy move on. Joe maintains he has nowhere to move on to. Uh, as Mr. Gippy, as Mr. Guppy arrives on the scene, Joe is asked to explain the money uh, found on his person. Uh, the boy says that it is remain of a gold uh, sovereign paid to him for showing a lady where Mr. Nemo lodged, worked and was buried. Questioning Joe, Mr. Guppy learns the entire story. Mr. Chad Band says that in her young, younger years, Guppy firms Cagney and Carboy put her in charge of Easter Summerson that a young child that snags be uh, provide Joe with some food after which he moves on. Summary analysis. Here, the comic and the pathetic are intermingled. Little Joe providing the pathos on Chad Band the comedy. Mr. Chad Band, whom Dickens satirized, is one of the books. books a numerous eccentric but is also a tire. He represents the loud, valuable but empty and rather hypocritical summarizer. As, as species not 
a rare in Dickens' era. Dickens keeps two important threading, threads running here, the mystery of Easter's identity and mystery of Lady Dedlock's pursuit of the fact about Nemo. Little Joe moving on uh, from one nowhere to another nowhere continues to motif of childhood sorrow. Summary and analysis chapter 2021. 20, the only regular uh, occupants of the office of Cagney and Carboy during the summary, summer are uh, summer are Richard Garston and Mr. Guppy. These two are visited by Barthol Bartholomew, Bart Smallweed, a thin precarious, a 15 year old, and Mr. Jobling, a law a writer currently unemployed, assisted by Guppy. Jobling finds work and takes the room of crooks formerly occupied by Nemo. Summary Chapter 21 introduces Bart Smallweed's grandparents and Bart's twin sister, Judy. Also introduced uh, is Charlie, Charlotte, Neck Cat, who is badly treated as a servant girl in Smallweed household. Grandfather Swanweed receives Mr. George Rouncewell, who comes to make a payment on a high interest loan he contracted with old man Pill Squid. The, at the attendant at George Rouncewell's shooting, uh, shooting gallery is depicted as an old and mishappened but not unlikable man. He is intensely loyal to uh, George. Analysis. In these two chapters, minor characters who have appeared or been mentioned earlier are further characterized and begin now to link with the plot of involving Lady Deadlock and Nemo. The small weeds are another of the numerous families dominated by its most disagreeable member and reckon with unhappiness. Summary and analysis, chapter 22. Dining with Mr. Tucking Horns, Nagsby tells him that Joe had says about the mysterious woman who was inquiring about Nemo. Mr. Bucket, a detective hired by Tucking Horn, goes with Nagsby to search for Joe. Why, meanwhile, Lady Deadlock has fired her French maid, Ma Millie Hart Hot Tanks. Somebody. When Joe is located, he is taken to Tucking Horn, where he identifies uh, Hortense as the lady who gave him the gold coin. However, when he sees the woman's hands and hear, hears her speak, he ch changes his mind. The detective is now certain that the disguised woman who asked Joe a question about Nemo is Lady Deadlock herself. Analysis. The reader's revulsion to the crafty, secretive, self-seeking Tucking Horn increases as the lawyer is shown to be ever more intent upon paying into matters which are really none of his business. Her Horton's ugly nature shows itself again as uh, she seeks revenge upon Lady Deadlock. Lady Deadlock, despite her haughty shortcomings, appear to be of higher character than these people. Summary and Analysis Chapter 3 Mrs. John Dias and his ward end their visit with pythons and return to Black to persuade Easter to hire her. Richard wants to abandon law and enter the army as an officer. Caddy Jellyby asks Ether to come to London and help her, and Prince Tru Tarvedra breaks the news of their engagement to Mrs. Jellyby and Tarvedra Sr., both of whom consent. Mr. John Dice gives Charlie naked to Easter as a helping maid. Summary analysis. This chapter creates artistic unity by returning uh, to several characters, themes, and subplots already established. Failing to find new employment, Hartons acquired for the reasons for being upset and unbalanced. The theme of Richard's recent lesson responsibility appear once more. The subplot of Caddy Adventure is continued and Dickens again bring Charlie Naked into view. Summary and Analysis Chapter 24 Richard obtained a commission in the army and began his training. Mr. Janda is apprehensive about the young man's inability, asking an adult to break their engagement. Summary Richard takes uh, fun sick fencing lesson from Mr. George Brownswell, the shooting gallery owner who mentioned that one of his uh, customers is Gridley. Gridley is in fact a dying man who had taken refuse in the gallery. Mr. Bucket disguised arrives and tries to uh, cheer Gridley but to no, uh, but to no avail. Exhausted and embittered, Gridley dies. Analysis. Richard experienced the first real difficulties created by his instability and his learning. Ada parallels and foreshadows his early death. The episode focusing on Gridley is completed in such a way as to highlight the evils spawned by Chancery. Summary and Analysis Chapter 25 Mrs. Snagsby suspects that her husband is keeping a secret from her. She concludes that he is the father of Joe and she asks Mr. Chadband to interview, interview Joe in Snagsby's presence. Soon she becomes convinced of her husband's guilt and fall into hysteria. 
Guster. Guster gives her super to Joe and also gives him an affectionate pat on the back. Next, he gives Joe a half crown, unaware that Miss Mrs. Snagsby is watching. After that, Mrs. Snagsby spies upon her husband relentlessly. Summary analysis: Cold, jealous, emotionally weak woman like Mrs. Snagsby create a character background again. Which they realized for uh, femininity of Esther and Ada is all more impressive. The sharp contrast also created dramatic effect and at the same time give Bleak House the variety found in real life. Summary and analysis, chapter 26. During breakfast at the shooting allegory, shooting gallery, Phil Squad reminisces about his early years and explain how gay he got to be so ugly. Unexpected. Lee, grandfather, small wheat, arrives accompanied by Jude, his granddaughter. He mentioned that Richard Carston has in an army commission. Mr. George Rouncewell suggests that Richard has no future in army. The old man then asks George if he has an example of handwriting of Captain uh, Howdown. Howdown borrowed money now from small wheat who thinks that the captain may still be alive. A friend in the city has a document which he wants to compare with specimen of Howdown's handwriting. George agrees to accompany the old man to see the friend, tucking on, but will make no other promise until he learns more about the matter. He asks a paper for his cabinet and goes off with the old man and Judy to Lincoln's in field. Summary analysis. The chapter draws George Rouncewell into the line of action involving tucking horn. Uh, hounding of Lady Dedlock. The chapter is typical of Dickens' serial, serious comic art in general. It mixes Dickens' humor treatment of Phil Squid with the ominous note sounded by uh, Tucking Horn's obsession. Summary and analysis chapter 27. Tucking Horn presents some papers to Mr. George and asks him to compare the handwriting with that of Captain Howdown. George refused to cooperate, does not even admit that he possesses any. How Down's writing. He says that he has no head of uh, for business and that he wants to seek advice from friends before he had anything more to do with the matter. He then goes to seek counsel of the former military comrade Matthew Bagnet, owner of the musician shop. Matthew, in turn, consults his wife, a personable pers and sensible woman. Her advice is that George should avoid all involvement with people who are too deep for him. George then goes back to Tucking Horn and refuses to give the lawyer any assistance. Summary. Angry Tucking Horn says that he wants nothing to do with the man who harbors credibly a threatening, murderous, dangerous fellow. A clerk passing by hears his phrase and mistakenly supposes applies to George himself. Analyst. Readers are inclined to view George Rouncewell even more favorable now that he mistrusts and opposes this sinister tucking horn is in a swan field of likable bagnet family readers also said that George opposing the lawyer entailed danger. Summary and analysis chapter 28. Sir Leicester Dadlock has many poor relations and is uh, at present entertaining several of them is Jeshni Gold. They include the spinster volume uh, Volumnia, Deadlock, and Bob Stables. Sir Leicester and Volumnia are appalled that Mr. Rouncewell, the iron master manufacturer of iron, has been considered suitable to go into Parliament. Mr. Rouncewell confers with the Lord and Lady Deadlock on the subject of the prospective engagement between Rosa and Maid and Rouncewell's son. What? Sir Leicester is offended when Rouncewell says that if the engagement takes place, he wants to give Rosa two years of additional schooling. Sir Leicester thinks it foolish and dangerous to educate the, lo uh, the lovely play place. Later, Lady Dedlock seems to find comfort in Rosa and at the same time to become pensive or even distressed in her presence. Summary Analysis In his portraits of Sir Leicester's poor but proud relatives, Dickens mildly satirized those who use their rich connections as uh, the basis of building unreal attitude or exceptions. Expectations. Satirized also in Sir Leicester's immense pride, the man keeps his mind proudly closed on the subject of change, on the class distinction, on the most everything else, yet Dickens does not present the upstart middle class in Iron Master to be greatly admirable either. The motive of the Lady Dedlock's melancholy and distraction is picked up again is sympathized in such a way as to keep the reader curiosity about 
are very much alive. Summary and analysis, chapter 29. At the approach of cold weather, the dead look closely chastening gold and moved to their place in London. The lawyer Tucking Han is a frequent visitor there and of the Lady Deadlock a discomforting one. Guppy, the law clerk and Kegney and Carboy has written her numerous letter requesting that he be allowed to visit her. Thus, one day she receives him and tells her that a long investigation has led him to believe that Lady Deadlock might have a family interest. In knowing that the father of the Easter Summers and name Lady Deadlock nervously admit knowing was Captain Howdown Nemo. Summary. After Guppy leaves, Lady Deadlock breaks into tears and she realizes that her daughter is alive. Her sister, Miss Barber, realizes about the child's having died uh, shortly after birth analysis. In this chapter, Lady Deadlock, one of the book's principal figure, learned the fact of so momentous that all of her subsequent actions are bound to be a huge, highly insignificant in this way. Suspense is heightened. So this is chapter 29 where Lady Deadlock comes to know about the, uh, the birth of her child alive. At the approach of cold weather, Lady Dead Deadlock uh, closed Chesney Wold and moved to their place in London. The lawyer Tucking Horn is a frequent visitor there and the Lady Deadlock a discomforting one. Guppy, the law clerk from the Cagney and Carboy, has written her numerous letters requesting that he be allowed to visit her. Thus, one day she received him and tells her that a long investigation has led him to believe that Lady Deadlock might have a family interest. In knowing that the father of the Easter Summerson, the name of uh, Lady Deadlock, now Obviously, admitting knowing was Captain Nahau Dom Nemo. Summary. After Gubby's Guppy leaves, Lady Deadlock breaks into tears and she realizes that her daughter is alive. Her sister, Miss Barbary, lied about the child's having died shortly after her death. Summary and analysis, chapter 30. Caddy, Jelly Boy, and, Pr and Prince uh, Thurby Drop have a church wedding. Easter and Ada serves as Bridemaids, the newlyweds are to have a big sunny moon at Grave West Vesen, a seaport in South East England. Alan Woodcart's mother mentioned to Easter that her son Alan has the fault of paying attention to a girl in whom he has no real interest. The wedding guests include a Miss Viss fan fanatic on subject of women's emancipation. Summary analysis. The happy ending for Caddy and Prince foreshadow the happy marriage later on Easter and Alan Woodcard. The mention of Alan prevents a reader from forgetting about a character who will become more and more important but who is not now a part of the action. A traditionalist on the subject of the family and a critic of all facets of fanaticism, Dickens takes the opportunity to satirize a proponent of women's liberation. Summary and analysis, chapter 31. Seriously ill, Joe has left London and moved on to lodge at a brickmaker house at St. Albans. The brickmaker's wives has sought assistance for Joe from the city officials but to no avail. Uh, they now come to Easter for help and she has to place in a loft of Mr. John Dye's table. Skimpole warns Mr. Uh, Mr. John Dye that Joe has a dangerous communicable disease. Charlie Naked attends Joe and contracts his disease shortly after the boy's disappearance. Easter then uh, nurses Charlie. But shortly after Charlie recovers, <coughs> Easter herself comes down with the disease and becomes temporarily blind. Summary, uh, summary analysis. Pathos dominates the story at this point as Joe's suffering intensifies and Easter herself is taken as striking. Joe's appearance, disappearance and Easter's blindness are dramatic and seemingly important developments and as such, the excited of our interest in seeing how things will turn out, the illness contract in turn by Joe, uh, Charlie and Easter is. It is chapter 31 where Easter becomes blind. Summary and analysis chapter 32. Snagsby, the law stationer, uh, still uh, spied upon his wife, meets with Mr. Uh, we will jobling near old Crook's house. Uh, when they go in, both men become aware of the strange odor like that of tainted and burnt meat. Snagsby is so dismayed by it that he leaves. At the, at about 10 o'clock, Guppy arrives and goes upstairs with Will. will, will. Uh, at midnight, the two are to meet Crook 
who is supposed to bring letter written by captain howdow summary they sit uh, they sit wa- waiting more and more uneasily in the room where howdow nemo was found dead a greased shoot continuously fall from the air and smell of the burnt fa- fat persist and finally the two men discovered a hor- 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 horribly offensive yellow liquid on one of the bit- window sill a wave goes to meet crook but he is unable to find him in crook's back room the two finds and the smell of burning ori originates there and it seems to be crook himself who has burned up a victim of spontaneous combustion increased with him apparently are the how down letter horrified waves and guppy fleet analysts these are among the uh, gr- grisliest pages in all the dickens work the eerie atmosphere and the suspense are masterly created the chapter does little to advance the plot but the sense of brooding and threatening evil enhance the story theme of appealing loss and destructiveness worth the law's delay dickens believe is the possibility of death by spontaneous combustion a chapter analysis and summary chapter 33 guppies in jobling we we uh, we we will i have gone to the soul arms there burns adjoining crook shop alarmed or merely curious about what happened numerous people of the area crowd into the tavern many remaining awake of night snagsby comes in puzzled about the combustion and soon confronted by his wife who wants to know why he is there then the whole family of small weed appear and grandfather small weed whose wife turns out to be crook's sister lays claim to crook's property Summary. The following night, Guppy in visit Lady Dadlock and says that he will be unable to deliver the Howdown's letter he promised to bring her. As Guppy leaves, he sees Tucking Horn, the old lawyer, immediately becomes suspicious. Analysis. Uh, Dickens strengthened artistic unity by establishing through Crook the relationship between the main plot and the subplot involving Small Weed at the end of the chapter. The motive of the Tucking Horn obsession with Lady Dadlock resumes. summary and analysis at uh, chapter 34 mr george rounswell and his so co-signed matthew bagnet have borrowed about 100 pounds from grandfather smallwood the promissory note which has been renewed several times is now due but george and matthew are unable to raise this cash smallwood is unmerciful and sends them to his lawyer tucking horn tucking horn to insist on immediate payment but he relents when george gives him the specimen of captain howdown's head right the note is that uh, then renewed with miss with matthew as free from the contract joe's goes to dine with bagnet and is cheered up by mrs bagnet summary analysis joe rounds will continues to come across as a likable personality the plot advances and tucking horn at this is a sample of captain howdown's head right clearly from tucking horn reaction when he receives the sample of howdown summary and analysis chapter 35 after several weeks of serious illness easter recovers but is left with a sca- scarred face richard has become hostile to mr jardice mistakenly suspecting that his guardian is somewhat competing with him in the jardice and jardice easter wants a week in the country to go grow more accustomed to her new appearance before she sees ada by thorns has written to mr jandice insisting that easter visit is his state at chesney wold before they leave for by thorns miss flight visit them tells much of her family history and mention that a veiled lady lady dedlock has visited jenny the brickmaker's wife asked about easter's condition and she took from the cottage the handkerchief easter left easter believes that the veiled visitor was probably carrie jelly miss flight also tells easter that alan woodcart has his uh, heroically saved uh, many lives in a shipwreck summary analysis accepting her financial scaring uh, facial scaring without self pity or bitterness Easter becomes an even more likable heroine. Richard continues to make self-destructive moves. We are not allowed to lose sight of Alan Woodcart or of Lady Dadlock's difficult situation. Summary and analysis, chapter thirty-six. One day, while Easter and Charles, uh, Charlie Naked are in the park at Chesney Wold, Lady Dadlock appears carrying the handkerchief she recently took from Jenny's 
got it she reveals herself as isar's mother and asks the young woman to forgive her and keep her secret she gives isar the letter which is to be read and then destroyed she also alerts isar to the fact that tucking horn is suspicious either reads isar reads the letter burns it and then goes for walk along the goat's goat's walk she listens to the echoes of her own footsteps and realizes that her fate seems to be bring calamity upon the stately house deadlock the next afternoon ada arrives and both girls are in overjoyed to see uh, to be reunited summary and analysis joyful tearful reunions are prevalent in dickens novels and in this chapter these there are two such to uh, today many readers find such scenes overdone sentimental and unrealistic but they pleased many readers in victorian england and dickens sincerely believes that the expression of such sentiment whether in fiction or in real life serves the useful purpose of promoting promoting moral ideals and regard of the others the plot advances somewhat as easter realizes uh, who uh, she is and become aware of her mother and her own difficult situation summary and analysis chapter 37 a uh, one evening during the month long visit at python's estate charles d whispers to is that you want to at the deadlock arm at the inn is that finds richard carston and mr skimpole who richard has become to admire skimpole richard says is worth thrice his weight in gold is that realizes that richard could scarcely have found a worse friend richard on leave from the army is trying to bring his chancery interest to a fruitful conclusion is that takes him to the house where he and ada meets again ada still loves richard but is that thinks he is too hostile to mr john dies and too preoccupied with the chancery suit to be genuinely in love with ada he asks is that to tell ada uh, that he is still unable to see uh, eye to eye with <coughs> mr john dies is hopeful of good result at last uh, from such a uh, suit of chancery by later ada replies that the best thing he can do is to De- desist from building his f- future on the hope of inheritance through the court. Skimpole has introduced Richard to Mr. Hole and now uh, serves as Richard's advisor. Hole is a venal and uninteresting person. Summary and analysis. The motive of Richard's course towards self-destruction continues. Dickens reinforces the reader's critical attitude towards Richard by having the young man befriend another foolish and totally irresponsible human being, Harold Skimpole. Summary and analysis chapter 38 soon after she returns to Bleak House Easter decides to go to London to see Mr Guppy first she visits Carrie and Prince uh, Tarvidra taken aback by Easter's scared face Guppy emphatically re- re- reacts retreats his uh, former marriage proposal to Easter Easter obtains from him a promise to relinquish all idea of serving me she no longer needs guppy's assistance in helping her learn her real identity and guppy's presence could possibly danger in danger her attempt to be secret about what she has learned from lady deadlock summary soon after she returns to bleak house isa decides to go to london to see mr guppy first she visits caddy friends at the we drop take up taken aback by isa's scared face guppy emphatically retreats his former marriage proposal to isa Easter obtained from him a promise to relinquish all ideas of serving me as she no longer needs Guppy's assistance in helping her learn her real identity and Guppy's presence could possibly endanger her attempt to be secret about what she has learned uh, from Lady Deadlock. Analysis even more clearly than before, Guppy is seen to be an absurd and shallow, shallow human being. Easter once again demonstrated this. prudence and resoluteness summary and analysis chapter 39 mr holes reaches far from a uh, honest lawyer asks richard for an advance of 20 pounds observing richard will space to guppy that richard is a case of smoldering rather than spontaneous combustion summary mr holes reaches far from honest lawyer asks richard for an advance of 20 pounds observing richard will say to guppy that richard is a case of smoldering rather than spontaneous combustion combustion uh, it occurs to guppy that captain how down's paper may have survived the in the uh, sea narration of crook grandfather smear small weed in a company of judy and tucking horn who is acting as small weed solicitor is already at crook's place searching through the uh, litter of papers no one finds anything of any value analysis 
By standing up the veil, uh, but powerful tucking on, Guppy slightly redeems himself from the absurdity which he emphasized, uh, epitomized in the preceding chapters. Grandfather's small weak greets and tucking on obsession remain prominent. Summary and analysis, chapter 40. Towards the end of the election, the guest and distinct, distant relatives of Sir Leicester arrives at Chesney Bowl, uh, where Mr. Rounswell, the housekeeper, has been preparing for them. <coughs> Although Volumnia is sure that election has gone Leicester way. Mr. Tuckinghorn dispels that illusion, announcing that uh, the vote heavily favored the party of Mr. Rounswell and his son. Tuckinghorn then does something to try to discon disconcert Lady Dedlock. Without using names, he tells Sir Leicester the story of Easter Captain Howdown and Lady Dedlock shows uh, no sign of being more than casually interested in his this narrative. Summary, towards the end of the election, the guest and distance relatives of Leicester arrives at the Chesney Bowl, where Mr. Rounswell, the housekeeper, has been preparing for them. Although Volumnia is sure that the election has gone Sir Leicester's way, Mr. Tuckinghorn dispels that illusions announcing that the vote heavily favoured the party of Mr. Rounswell and his son. Tuckinghorn uh, then does something to try to disconcert Lady Dedlock without using names. He tells Sir Leicester the story of Easter, Captain Howdown and Lady Dedlock. Lady Dedlock shows no signs of being more than casually interested in this narrative. Analysis in its description of the changing tone of mood and lady uh, of the deadlocks men mentioned as the day moves towards night. The chapter shows Dickens as a master of pictorial art. The satire of the British party politics is not closely related to either the plot or the main themes, but it is rich and amusing. In this verbal torture of the lady deadlock, tucking horns. A viciousness continues to manifest itself. The lady's self-control raises her in the reader's seats. We'll continue uh, for chapter 41.